I want to provide a very basic look at some different time series models that are quite popular in economics and finance. In this video, I'm going to tackle the autoregressive model or the AR model. In some other videos, I will tackle some other uh, topics such as the moving average, um, the arch model, etc. Now, in economics and finance, we're interested in finding the relationship between a dependent variable y and some independent variables x. And we may want to use that for forecasting purposes, or we may just want to get a, uh, an understanding of the relationship. So for example, what's the impact of advertising dollars on sales? Right? If you spend more on advertising, do sales rise? If they rise, how much do they rise? What's your bang per buck when you're spending this money? Right? It might give you a good idea um, about whether you should be spending more on advertising or perhaps spending less on it if it's not very effective. We might be interested in how beef sales are impacted by the price of beef, okay? or for that matter, by the price of some substitute like chicken or pork. Right? If beef prices are high, people may switch and buy chicken, or they may buy pork, or they may just forego, um, you know, meats altogether and go with, you know, um, a vegetarian diet. So to estimate these relationships, we often use regression analysis. So if you're watching this video, you should be familiar with that. You know, regression analysis basically takes a, a scatter diagram of x and y and fits a line through it, okay? If it's uh, one independent variable, if it's more than that, it fits a plane. And that line or that plane shows the relationship between x and y. So we get an idea, let's say, for example, um, that slope coefficient on advertising dollars happens to be positive. That means spending more on advertising increases sales, right? And the bigger that, you know, coefficient, the more we get out of a dollar out of, of advertising dollars. So that's what we do in regression analysis, and we can do the same thing in time series models. Now, in finance, we have a lot of data that's represented by a time series. For example, stock returns. So how do we want to model that? Well, one method is using something referred to as an autoregressive model. In this case, the time series is regressed on its own past value. So instead of getting a separate independent variable, we're simply going to try and understand the relationship between, for example, the, price, the, you know, the stock returns of Apple today and the stock returns of Apple yesterday. And so um, the notation we use, AR1, means it's an autoregressive model of order one. That is, we just put one lag in here. So this looks like your standard regression, right? Yt, so uh, the value of y in time period t equals a constant, which we uh, call b0 here, plus b1, the slope coefficient or the relationship between yt minus 1 and yt, and then we have this error term here. We can also represent this model by um, what's called an ARP model, or generalize it to an ARP model. That means instead of just having one lagged variable, we're going to have p lagged variables. So we might have two lags, three lags, five lags, etc. And again, the model looks the same. Now, Technically, to use these, there are certain conditions that need to be met. I'm going to discuss those in some separate video, but I just want to provide an, you know, an introduction for those of you who see this pop up in readings in a class you're taking. If you're doing the CFA program, um, they talk about AR models, they talk about ARCH, they talk about MA models, some of these time series things. I mean, you're unlikely to need to go out to estimate them, but you ought to have a basic idea of what they are. So how do you choose the AR order? So, you know, should you choose an AR1, an AR2, you know, which 
autocorrelations or which lagged variables should we include. So here I have a graph of, for example, the quantity of hamburgers. And actually I mean hamburger patties, you know, which you would buy to put on a grill. And let's just say, for example, you know, at the start of the year, you know, there's not a huge demand for hamburgers because it's cold in much of the country, so people aren't grilling. And usually a hamburger tastes a little better when you do it, you know, on a gas or charcoal grill. But as it warms up, people start barbecuing more, and it peaks sometime in the, uh, you know, summer, for example. And then it starts to go down again because it starts getting colder in certain parts of the country. People start grilling less, so they buy less hamburger patties. And then towards the end of the year, it sort of flattens out. And then the cycle starts again um, the following year. And you can see that happens, you know, year in and year out. So you've got some relationship, and it does appear to have some sort of pattern to it that past values seem to be a good predictor of what the um, current values might be. So how do we decide on that? Well, one way is to compute the partial auto autocorrelation function. So you're probably familiar with the concept of correlation, right? It's the relationship between, you know, two variables. Do they move in the same direction? Do they move in opposite directions? And what we can do, um, you know, with some econometric package, you can find that they have, they'll actually compute the partial autocorrelation functions, and they'll also tell you whether they're significantly different from zero. So oftentimes they'll draw a band like this, and if the uh, you know autocorrelation function is above that band, it's significant. If it's below, it's not significant. So what we've drawn here is you know lags one, two, three, five, and twelve happen to be significant. So if we were putting together some sort of autocorrelation model, we'd like to include those lags in our regression. So, you know, here we're going to formulate the model. Um, so we have the demand, you know, or the amount of hamburgers at time period t, we'll call h sub t. And we're going to try and relate it to past values, t minus 1, t minus 2, etc. So from that partial autocorrelation function, we can see that 1, 2, 3, 5, and 12 are significantly different from zero. Okay, could be less, could be more, could be just one, could be just uh, you know an AR1 model, could be an AR2 model. Here we happen to have four different or five different lag variables. So our regression model would look something like this. Okay, so the the you know amount of hamburger in time period t is going to be related to a constant here, right? The intercept term if you're um, you know, looking at a graph. And then you know, the sensitivity or the slope coefficient beta 1 with respect to you know, hamburgers lag 1 period. And then the slope coefficient or the relationship um, rel you know, times the amount of hamburgers sold 2 periods ago. And likewise for 3 periods, 5 periods, and 12 periods. Okay. And of course, we're not going to hit it perfectly, so we have this error term. And again, I'm going to dispense with discussing here, you know, some of these rules of econometrics and, you know, how the um, error term is distributed. But, you know, this gives you an idea of what an autocorrelation model is. And it's quite popular in finance, okay? There are some, you know, shortcomings to it or some, some cases where you shouldn't use it and I will discuss those in some future videos.